Okay, so uh, while you and I, best case scenario, got $1,200, and I, I hope everyone was responsible with it because it's all we got for literally months, um, there were funds of hundreds of billions of dollars, and in some cases trillions of dollars, set aside for the wealthy corporations, all of that. Some of it needed to keep certain businesses afloat, and some of it obviously designed to be a slush fund for Steve Mnuchin and the Trump administration to pay off their friends, or possibly themselves. And um, we have no idea if that's what they're doing, because they're not revealing what they're doing with the money. So let's talk about how we got to this point. The over $2 trillion uh, CARES Act, signed by Trump in March, established the Paycheck Protection Program, PPP, with uh, $349 billion in funding for forgivable loans. After the initial capital ran out in less than two weeks, lawmakers approved another $300 billion, uh, though over $130 billion of that amount was still left as of Tuesday. So the Small Business Administration has previously released detailed loan information dating back to 1991 for the sort of program that this was based on. We would know what that money was being used for. But apparently, while they initially promised they would continue that, with an SBA spokesperson telling the Washington Post on April 16th that the agency intends to post individual loan data in accordance with the information presently on the SBA website after the entire loan process has been completed, and then on April 17th said, again, that it would do that, it would uh, respond to records requests. Now, Steve Mnuchin says, we believe that that's proprietary information, and in many, why am I making him sound normal? And in many cases, for sole proprietors and, sole, and small businesses, it is confidential information. The reason why we're not disclosing the names and amounts, unlike in the program it's based on, is because of that issue. So it's set up based on a program where we get information for hundreds of billions of dollars that are used, understandably. They say they're going to multiple times, but now Steve Mnuchin just wants you to trust him that they're using it wisely. Okay, so... The only group of people to be angry at in this story is Congress, mm -hmm. okay? Because this is how the legislation was written by Congress. Congress handed Steve Mnuchin, who is a disgusting person, mm -hmm. who has a history of committing fraud with One West Bank in order to foreclose on elderly people and throw them out of their homes. That's what Steve Mnuchin did. And Congress, with the help of Democrats, by the way, yeah. signed over our money, our money. This is taxpayer money. Every once in a while, people will write to me and be like, actually, no, this is money that the Federal Reserve is printing out. No, 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 no. This specific portion of the bill was funded through our money, taxpayer money, the $500 million that was handed over to Steve Mnuchin. Mm -hmm. That is our money, okay? It's different from what the Federal Reserve is doing. They handed him that money with no strings attached. So please spare me the crocodile tears from Democratic members of Congress. You did that, you yeah. did that. Okay, yeah. so we need to hold them accountable for it. Republicans, of course they would do it. This is who Republicans are. Yeah. But Democrats are supposed to be different. And I, I am not surprised at all that Steve Mnuchin is demonstrating uh, a lack of transparency when it comes to our money and where it went. Yeah, that's true. And um, I would say uh, everybody, um, you know, really soak this story in because this is the wave of the future. Phase one was well, Anna and I do a generally futile job where we report on all the corruption going on. Phase two is we don't even know what it is. I mean, we have general idea that probably money, like, for all we know, Steve Mnuchin is taking the money. Honestly, we don't know. For all we know, he's investing in companies and then giving them tens of millions of dollars or a billion dollars. We have no idea. That's the, if Trump gets reelected, like, we already know he's getting rid of the inspectors general. They're, they're getting rid of the leakers. There's no transparency left. It will be a case where things will be happening. Crimes will be committed. Corruption will be continuing, but we will have no idea that it's actually happening. We certainly won't know the details. Right now, we get no consequences. In the future, we get no information whatsoever. Yeah, and, and I want to I want to tie this all back to Black Lives Matter and for all the naysayers who think that what uh, this movement is about is getting rid of protections and... Um, you know, supporting lawlessness and crime. 
there has been lawlessness and crime at the very top for a long time now. Mm -hmm. This isn't just about the Trump administration. Obama was supposed to represent hope and change. He was supposed to come in as president. And I fell for this. I will admit, I totally fell for this. I thought he was going to come in and be like, hey, bankers, you guys effed up. You guys destroyed the economy. Mm -hmm. You guys committed crimes. You committed fraud. Fraud. You're going to prison. But he didn't do any of that. None of it. Okay? Bankers were bailed out. Corporations were bailed out. And people were angry. It's, it's justified anger. Then under the Trump administration, we got the same thing, but on steroids. That type of criminality continues year after year after year with no consequences for those at the very top. Okay? We have all these members um, of the Senate who engaged in insider trading, no consequences. Okay, maybe, maybe one of them, um, Richard Burr, is that his name? Mm -hmm. um, I just had a brain fart, yeah, yeah, but yeah. he might, yeah. Richard Burr might, he's still being investigated. But Ke Kelly Purely Loeffler, for political reasons because of Donald Trump. Like, <laughs> Loeffler exactly. was worse in what she actually did, apparently. Yeah, yes. it's amazing. And look, I, I know this is a, a long rant and a long spiel, but the point that I'm trying to make is that criminality, uh, our law enforcement has turned a blind eye to criminality when it comes to the wealthy for a long time now, yeah. while focusing on BS, broken windows policing, which criminalizes ordinary Americans for nonsense, okay? For absolute nonsense. I don't care how much weed someone's smoking. I don't care how much of whatever drug anyone's doing, okay? I don't think that that person should be in prison. I don't think that my tax dollars should go toward criminalizing them. I think my tax dollars should go toward helping them, yeah. rehabilitating them, creating opportunities and communities so people don't feel desperate and, and down to the point where they turn to drugs to numb the pain. I, that's what I want. Yeah, it's reasonable. Anyway. And look, so we're, we're talking about this. Maybe maybe someone will do the right thing and force accountability on this. Probably not. But this is, you know what this feels to, to me like? This is the coronavirus of looting stories. It has become so big that people just detach from it. Like it's, I can't, like if Trump literally shot someone in the face, that would be a bigger story than him just sitting by while 115,000 people die. That's the way our minds work. You know, when he steals a little, when when his son goes on a $75,000 taxpayer funded sheep shooting mission, that's a bigger story than them stealing hundreds of billions of dollars. It's just the way it works. Um, and it's sick. Yeah, like there was the fake story about a Rolex uh, store being looted. Turns out nothing was actually stolen. That got more news than this will get hundreds of billions of dollars. A store with its windows broken where nothing was stolen is a bigger issue of theft than Steve Mnuchin, possibly the person I would trust least, maybe even less than Trump, because he's savvier than Trump, to handle this money. Somehow that's how, how we prioritize. For more political news breakdowns, interviews, stories of activism, and me trying my hardest to care about the occasional big celebrity news story, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash the damage report. And you can ring the bell wherever it is so you don't miss anything.